We're in uh, Roshlov, it's the European capital of culture, and our stage is all set up down there, and we're doing our first show of our European tour down there tomorrow night. We're playing with an orchestra. The orchestra is conducted by Zbigniew Preissner, who did all the orchestrations for this album and the previous uh, On an Island album. It's looking good. You know, um, we did a good rehearsal, and we're doing some more rehearsing today. I'm pretty happy with the way it's all looking and sounding. And we sat up here and watched the lights being rehearsed last night. It was very beautiful. Um, it's it's going to be a great show. It's turned out to be a lot of fun. We're having a great time. And this is the sort of the final um, bit playing beautiful old Europe, which is a bit odd on a day like today when uh, we're just voted to leave Europe as Britons. I am at home with my wife, and my wife, Rose Lane, checks our website, and she says, you know, there, there's a message here from someone claiming to be David Gilmore. And the message read, Hi, Chuck. David Gilmore here. Honest. I didn't even have a, an audition or anything. I just went to Phil's house, and he filmed me playing the sax solo of Shine On Your Crazy Diamond along to a, to a YouTube video. And he recorded it on his phone and sent it over to David, and that was basically my audition. <laughs> I met David about 30 years ago, close to 30 years ago. Hello, 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 hello. I was a music director for Michael Jackson, and I remember seeing David with uh, Pink Floyd. The first time was Versailles. It was such a spectacle. You know, I'm used to being in big productions, obviously, with Michael, but these guys are on a different level right here. Delight of Rome, Italy. My goodness, heat of greatness, and here ready to be doing two great shows with David. Mmm, no, no, too many surprises. Endless surprises. David creates magic, always has done. Master of surprise. And he's still intensely interested in what he's doing. Probably the best man I've ever played in in terms of the way the energy moves around the stage. It is a history slash archaeological tour of ancient sites. Yes, it was a... <laughs> I answered the advert in the back of a lady for a short walking tour of archaeological sites in southern Europe. There you are, moving through the European tour. It, it's up, it's down, it's, it's light, it's shade, it's dark, it's bright, it's loud, it's quiet. You know, all frequencies are in there somewhere, you know, and you can be really artistic with the music. I mean, it's great. As an engineer, for me, it's, it's the best thing ever, you know, I have to say. Yeah, musically, it's been great, really stimulating. Everyone's got on. Uh, 
But in terms of different, I think I think everything's that you know everything's. I mean, like this whole tour's been different. It's a tour of one-offs. No two shows are the same. Every day has a different set of rules, a different stage. How we get it in and how we put it up mm -hmm. is different every day. Yes, go ahead. I'm just um, arriving on site. Jolly good. <laughs> I think it's a vision that he has. He wants to play beautiful places. You know, here we are in Europe playing largely Roman amphitheaters, which is just insane. But it's so wonderful, and the setting is so special. You know, I, I think it has uh, an effect on how you play. It's historic. Every venue has a deep history to it. And somehow that filters into the music. And when you're on that stage and you're looking out and you're looking at all these beautiful, you know, old ancient Roman architecture, it's just so special and so unique and very moving to be able to do it in that setting. Where are we off to today? We're off in a silly convoy instead of a nice bus. It's all my fault, <laughs> yeah, I know. Every time. Blame me. What can I do? You know, at this time in my life, my career, it's very nice to not put my career absolutely as the first thing. I mean, obviously, I'm doing it to the best of my ability, and I put everything into making sure it's right. But at the same time, um, I'm sort of doing it in school holidays, university holiday things, more so that some of my kids can, well, some of them aren't kids really anymore. It's nice for them to see what I do and to be able to come along on these legs of the tour. And, and, and they're brilliant critics. They watch the shows and they give me advice, very good advice. In Verona, uh, once again, at this marvellous, marvellous amphitheatre. It's such a privilege to be able to play music with David and, and the, the calibre of musicians in this band. And uh, it's just great. Every night it seems like it just keeps getting better and better and we, we keep gelling more and more as a band and um, having a lot of fun. Yeah, it feels great. It's great to see grown men actually I described crying, this, crying <laughs> looking as if it's Father Christmas. Christmas is their birthday. They're seeing their child being born. It's like, oh my goodness, and cannot quite believe it. They cannot believe he is there. I understood that family was very important to David, and I have the utmost respect for that. I mean, it's fantastic to, to see a relationship like his and Polly's. 
I mean, not only are they married and for 20 odd years and have wonderful children, but they collaborate. You know, she's an amazing lyricist, fantastic. The themes that they uh, come up with you know, lyrically and then the way David puts together with music. And of course, David writes lyrics as well. So it's a, a wonderful blend. Uh, not so easily done, I think, in, in a lot of marriages, but it certainly works for them and works so well. I was suggesting he just keeps playing, but just comes off the mic. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, just yeah. walks off stage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and do this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> David has encouraged us to express ourselves within the parameters of the music. You know, have your own voice. He's freed some people up musically, except me. Uh, I've been, he's made it very clear that he wants everyone to have fun, except me. Actually, from 2006 onwards, I thought my playing had changed to a point where it was kind of exactly what David would have wanted. But no! <laughs> There's still more! He still wanted to prune more! This is not your average arena. I mean, you know, it's amphitheaters and Pompeii and Verona and uh, estates like in Chantilly, you know, it's just really, really uh, unique. And that's been another uh, plus as well to add to the, you know, wonderful memories. Three. <laughs> yes! Well, you know, look, I was involved in Venice, Palace of Versailles. Um, I think that, you know, bringing chaos to um, historic landmarks is always fun. Pompeii might be the oldest arena in the world, but it's also probably the smallest. You cannot sort of say, OK, we're doing a Roman amphitheatre. That means there's an entrance here and an entrance there. Everything had to be pushed from the road a quarter of a mile to the stage entrance. Well, the problems with Pompeii with this show are that there's no roof. So there's nothing to hang anything off of. Uh, lighting was all done with follow spots, pretty much, and floor lighting. So it was, it was a completely one-off approach for Pompeii. In silence, I'd hear you And a boat lies waiting Still your clouds all flame You know, in some crazy ways, I actually like the quiet parts better. For me, the extreme parts of the show are, to me, like low-hanging fruit, because you know you're going to get in a reaction. I think it's probably harder to keep people focused when new material they're not familiar with and quiet material. So those are my challenges, and if I'm able to sit in the audience and see that nobody moves, I, I feel like I've done my job. 
I mean, I've spent a lot of my life, my career, singing other people's words, as well as some of my own, now singing Polly's words. And, and I owe it to those people to mean what I say, what I sing. And I concentrate on it. I am thinking about it as I'm singing. I mean, there's a lot of things to be thinking about when you're singing and playing. Being present in that moment of what you're doing, 100%, is very, very important. I will never forget any of these any of these shows, you know. It was absolutely amazing. I never imagined that from being a kid listening to songs like Money and Us and Them and I Wish You Were Here that, that I'd be playing those with this guy. Maybe I should have shown you a clear, a plain, a truth. You know, when this tour's done, I guess I'll be back in the studio. Moving forward, looking forward, always looking forward.